I remember the first time I felt it, this gnawing sense that something was seriously wrong. It wasn't because of Linda's new obsession with her phone or the recent late nights she claimed were extra shifts at work. No, it started with Mia and Sophie. Our daughters, 12 and 8, had always been open books, unable to keep secrets for more than five seconds. Suddenly they were whispering to each other, casting these furtive glances and talking in hushed voices. One Saturday morning, as I was getting breakfast ready, I passed by their bedroom and heard Mia's voice muffled and low, like she was afraid someone would overhear. Sophie giggled, and then they fell silent, clearly hiding something. This was a complete turnaround. Usually, if Mia and Sophie had something to share, even if it was as small as finding a cool rock in the yard, I'd hear about it before the day was over. But now, they were actively making sure I didn't hear anything. I shrugged it off, laughing to myself, thinking maybe they were planning a surprise or some innocent prank. But that was my first mistake, brushing off those small things dot. Then there was the day Linda came back from yoga. She'd taken it up a few weeks prior convinced that she needed to recenter herself. I supported it, happy she had found a new outlet. But that night, she looked far too done up for someone who'd just finished an intense workout. Her hair was perfectly styled, makeup flawless, and she was wearing a new dress that I hadn't seen before. Not at all the sweaty, worn-out look you'd expect after a yoga class. The girls were acting strange, too, giggling and sharing these silent glances with each other, as if they were all in on some big inside joke that I wasn't a part of, Dot. That night, she didn't come to bed, said she had some paperwork to catch up on, that it was a busy time at work. The feeling gnawed at me, this creeping suspicion that something was going on. I tried to push it away, but I couldn't sleep. So I finally gave in and crept down the stairs, barely making a sound dot. In the dim light of the hallway, I heard Linda's voice coming from the living room. It wasn't her usual tone. She sounded happy, warm, a little too soft. I couldn't make out the words at first, but then her voice became clearer. I can't wait to see you tomorrow, she said, and my stomach dropped. I froze in place the shadows cloaking me as I strained to listen, hardly breathing. No, the girls are coming too, she continued. They love you. My heart pounded so loudly that for a second, I was sure she'd hear it. I stayed there in the dark, frozen in disbelief as my wife spoke about our daughters like they were some extended part of her secret life. I couldn't move, my whole body numb from the realization of what I'd stumbled upon. She was taking them with her to see someone, another man, and they knew Dot. The worst part, though, was that our daughters, Mia and Sophie, knew. I went back upstairs, barely feeling my feet on the steps. I laid there in bed for the rest of the night, staring up at the ceiling, waiting for the weight of what I'd just uncovered to fully sink in. Linda had dragged Mia and Sophie into her lies, treating her betrayal like a family outing. It was a whole other level of deception, something twisted and ugly I hadn't even imagined. I stayed quiet, didn't say a word. I had to be absolutely sure before I confronted her, because if I was wrong, but I wasn't wrong, was I? I'd heard her voice clear as day, talking about taking them with her to meet this man. The betrayal was like a knife in my chest, but I couldn't react out of pure anger. I had to be smart about this dot. The next morning felt surreal. Linda was in the kitchen serving up cereal for the girls, her smile casual, cheerful, like she hadn't been whispering sweet nothings to some stranger on the phone last night. She laughed at Sophie's jokes, and Mia was practically glued to her side, giggling and whispering. Watching them, it felt like my life was suddenly some sort of stage play where I was the only one who didn't know my role. I was looking at my wife, my children, and feeling like they were strangers. It was like I didn't know them at all anymore. I smiled, though, kept my voice light, kissed Linda's cheek like everything was fine. But inside, I was boiling. Every word, every movement I made that morning felt staged, controlled, like I was an actor going through the motions. The rage and hurt were coiled inside me, ready to spring, but I knew I couldn't afford to tip her off. Not yet. Not until I knew more Dot. That morning, Linda mentioned she'd be taking the girls to a kid's yoga class. I nodded, pretending to believe her. 
but I already knew what she was planning. She wasn't going to yoga. She was going to meet him, and she was taking my daughters with her. The thought turned my stomach. She was using Mia and Sophie to make her lies seem real, to cover her tracks. She was making them complicit without them even knowing, dot. Once they left, I sat at the kitchen table, gripping my coffee mug until my knuckles turned white. I couldn't just sit back while she paraded my daughters around with another man, making them a part of her twisted charade. I had to know who he was, to see him for myself. My mind was racing, the betrayal and anger blending into something sharper, something cold and focused. I opened Linda's laptop, desperate to find anything that would tell me who this man was. I hated the way it made me feel, snooping through her things like some kind of paranoid maniac. But trust was already shattered. Privacy, respect, those didn't mean a thing anymore after what she'd done. I told myself that I was doing it for Mia and Sophie, to protect them from whatever twisted game Linda was playing. That helped steady my hands as I clicked through her emails, dot, and there it was, plain as day. A dinner reservation for two, a restaurant about an hour outside of town, right there in black and white. He'd sent her a message confirming the time, and the words stabbed through me. Can't wait to see you and the girls. They're so sweet. I've missed them. I nearly broke the laptop screen. This wasn't some fling. This guy had been around long enough to know Mia and Sophie well, comfortable enough to talk about them like he was family. The thought of some stranger sitting across from my daughters, acting like he had any right to be in their lives, made me feel sick. I grabbed my keys and got in the car. I wasn't going to sit around while Linda paraded my daughters in front of this man, pretending they were some happy family. I had to see this for myself. As I drove, my thoughts grew clearer, sharper, like ice crystallizing. I knew exactly what I was going to do, Dot. When I pulled up to the restaurant, I parked and scanned the outdoor seating. And there they were, Linda laughing, her hand resting lightly on the arm of a man I'd never seen before in my life. He looked about my age, maybe a little younger, the type of guy who probably thought he could do no wrong. Mia and Sophie sat on either side of him, eating their dessert, talking like he was their dad. I walked up slowly, my every step feeling heavier, the air around me thick and electric. When I finally reached their table, they looked up at me, surprised. Linda's face went pale, her smile vanishing. I didn't even give her time to speak. Who the hell is he? I asked, my voice low but cold as steel dot. The girls looked confused, their chatter fading into silence. The man, this stranger, shifted in his seat, clearly uncomfortable. Linda tried to speak, her mouth opening, but no words came out. I forced a calm smile and told Mia and Sophie to go play inside for a bit, gently ushering them away from the table. They hesitated, looking between me and their mom, but they eventually shuffled away, glancing back in confusion. Dot, once they were out of earshot, I turned back to Linda and the man, my eyes fixed on him. So, I said, my voice deadly calm, you want to explain this or should I? The stranger stood up, trying to act casual like this was all no big deal. But I could see the nervous flicker in his eyes. He was out of his league, and he knew it. Dot Linda fumbled, her voice shaky. Tom, I can explain. Explain? I cut her off, my voice barely above a whisper, but seething with rage. You've been dragging our daughters into this, pretending like this is some normal family outing? I was done with her excuses, done pretending that everything was fine. As I stared at Linda and her mystery man, I could feel something break inside me, something that wasn't ever going to be fixed. I stood there, staring them both down. Linda opened her mouth to speak, but all that came out was a stammered string of half-formed words. The man shifted uneasily in his seat, his eyes darting between Linda and me, and I could see the strain of forced calm tightening his face. He knew he'd been caught, and it was almost satisfying to see him squirm. But satisfaction was the last thing on my mind. I felt a sense of betrayal so deep, so consuming, that it left no room for anything else. Who is he, Linda? I demanded, my voice low but firm. And why is he here with my daughters? She fumbled, casting a desperate glance at him before looking back at me. Tom, this isn't what it looks like, she finally managed, her voice shaky. Daniel, he's just a friend. The words stung, each syllable heavy with the ridiculousness of her lie. 
I laughed, a bitter, humorless sound. A friend? A friend that you bring our daughters to meet? A friend you lie about, sneak around with, introduce to my family as if he has any right to be there? Linda's face twisted, her discomfort growing, but she tried to regain control. Her shoulders straightened, her gaze hardening as if she was about to launch into some defense. You don't get it, Tom. You've been distant for years. You're never home. You're always too busy with work to notice what's happening in our lives. Oh, don't try to turn this around on me. I shot back, feeling my pulse hammering in my ears. That's your excuse? Because I work hard to provide for our family, you think it's okay to sneak around, to drag our girls into this mess? My voice was rising, but I didn't care. Let the whole restaurant hear it. Everyone needed to know exactly what Linda was. Linda's hand clenched around her purse strap, her eyes filled with a defensive fire that I knew all too well. She turned to her friend, Daniel, and gave him a slight nod, like she was reassuring him. The way she looked at him, it was like she believed he belonged in this part of her life. The casual intimacy of it was sickening, Dot. Then she looked back at me, calm but steely. We're all just trying to be happy, Tom, she said, her voice cold and controlled. The girls, they're happy with him. They've been happier than I've seen them in a long time. Maybe if you'd paid more attention, you'd understand that. Those words hit me harder than a punch to the gut. Mia and Sophie, my little girls, were now attached to this stranger, this man she'd brought into their lives behind my back. She'd twisted them around her lies, planted him into their lives as if that was her decision to make, as if she could decide who was a part of my family. I'm done with this, I said, shaking my head as I struggled to keep the rage from consuming me. I'll talk to my girls later. Right now, I'm getting out of here before I say something I'll regret. Without another word, I turned and left. I couldn't stand to look at her, and I definitely didn't want to look at him. They were both part of some reality I'd never agreed to, and I wasn't going to let them continue pretending otherwise dot back at home. I tried to process what had just happened. I paced the living room, hands clenching and unclenching as the full weight of Linda's betrayal sank in. There was no fixing this. It wasn't just an affair. It was something that had crept into the heart of my family, tainting everything I'd thought was pure. I knew, deep down, that I couldn't just let this go. Linda had brought Mia and Sophie into her deception, and that was something I would never forgive, Dot. When Linda finally came home later that night, I was waiting. She opened the door and froze when she saw me sitting in the armchair, arms crossed, eyes fixed on her. Her posture was tense, the mask of control she'd worn earlier slipping as she shut the door behind her. We need to talk, she said quietly, her voice low. She sounded as if she was the one in control, as if she could direct the conversation to fit her narrative. I nodded slowly. Yes, we do, but this isn't going to go the way you think it will. She set her purse down and came closer, leaning on the kitchen counter and crossing her arms, almost as if she was bracing herself. Tom, we've had problems for a long time, she began, her voice softer but calculated. You know that. I tried to talk to you, but you were always too distracted, too busy, and I've needed more than that. Enough, I said, my voice low but unyielding. Don't stand there and pretend like this is my fault. You're the one who started lying, sneaking around, bringing some stranger into our girls' lives like it's the most normal thing in the world. Linda's face tightened, her arms wrapping around herself as she struggled to keep her composure. He's not a stranger, Tom. Daniel has been good to the girls, and they like him. You should see how much they light up when he's around. A wave of nausea hit me as I realized just how deeply she'd pulled Mia and Sophie into her world with Daniel. She had woven him into their lives as if it was her right to do so, as if my presence or absence didn't even matter. My voice dropped to a deadly calm, and I looked her dead in the eye. So that's it? You're going to sit here and justify everything, try to twist things around, make it seem like this is all perfectly fine? I took a step closer, barely containing my anger. What's your endgame here, Linda? You think this is something we can just brush under the rug? She straightened, her expression hardening, her mouth a thin line. You're making this worse than it is, Tom. The girls have accepted him. They know we've had issues. They understand more than you think. I stared at her, stunned by how easily she was spinning her lies. She actually believed she was right. 
She thought Mia and Sophie's acceptance of this man was normal, that it was her right to insert him into their lives and make them part of her secret life. She was rewriting reality, and it was terrifying, Dot. The air between us felt thick and heavy as I stepped even closer. Listen to yourself, Linda. You've been lying to them, dragging them into your mess, and now you're going to stand there and pretend that this is somehow healthy for them? I'm not going to let you keep putting them through this. She lifted her chin defiantly, her eyes narrowed. You don't get to make that call. They're my daughters, too, and they've been doing just fine. They've been happier with Daniel around than I've seen them in a long time, and I'm not going to take that away from them. A silence hung in the air as her words sank in. She was serious. She actually thought she could erase me from their lives, that Daniel could take my place, like I was some kind of ghost she could quietly replace, Dot. Something inside me snapped. I forced my voice to stay steady as I leaned in, just close enough to make my point clear. If you think for one second that I'm going to let you manipulate my daughters to twist their lives around this fantasy you've created, you're dead wrong. This is the last time I'll stand by while you treat them like they're part of your personal story. From now on, things are going to be different. Linda's face paled, but she quickly covered it with a defiant glare. So what now? She hissed, crossing her arms. You want a divorce? Fine. You want to go through all that, ruin everything? Go ahead but you'll regret it. Don't think for a second that you'll just get to take them from me. They need me, Tom. You think you can walk in here and just take over? You haven't even been around. I took a step back, my voice quiet but firm. Linda, you've already done enough damage. You've betrayed them, you've lied to them, and you've dragged them into something they never asked for. They may not understand it now, but one day they'll know what you did. She let out a sharp breath, her posture stiffening even more, but she didn't respond. The truth was hanging in the air between us, heavy and inescapable. She knew as well as I did that I wasn't going to back down. I wasn't just going to let this slide, dot finally, comma. She exhaled, her voice tense. So what happens now? I shook my head. What happens now is that we talk to a lawyer. We start figuring out how to get through this mess without dragging Mia and Sophie through any more of your lies. Her eyes flashed with anger. Oh, you're going to bring lawyers into this? She let out a bitter laugh. Fine, Tom. But don't think this is going to go the way you want it to. If you want a war, you've got one. And with that, she turned and stormed out of the room, leaving me standing there, alone in the aftermath of what felt like a bomb detonating in the middle of our lives. The days that followed felt like I was walking on thin ice, every step calculated, every word measured. Linda and I barely spoke, and when we did, it was nothing more than clipped phrases, cold as steel. I could see the girls trying to make sense of it all, their wide, questioning eyes following me around the house as if searching for answers I wasn't ready to give, Dot. It was Sophie who first asked. She was sitting at the kitchen table, coloring, when she looked up at me with those big, innocent eyes. Daddy, why are you and Mommy mad at each other? Her words sliced through me, sharper than any of Linda's barbed accusations. I wanted to explain, to tell her everything, but she was too young. She didn't need to know about her mother's lies or the stranger Linda had forced into our lives. But I couldn't ignore it either. Sophie deserved honesty, even if I couldn't tell her the whole truth. I knelt down beside her, forcing a smile. Sweetheart, sometimes grown-ups have disagreements, but it doesn't mean we don't love you and Mia. We both love you very much. She seemed to accept that, though her little brow furrowed with confusion. She looked at her drawing, then back at me. Is Uncle Daniel part of the disagreement? I clenched my jaw, struggling to keep my voice calm. Yes, he is. But you don't need to worry about that, okay? Just know that I'll always be here for you and Mia. She nodded her eyes wide but still held the uncertainty of a child grappling with a situation far beyond her years. Watching her return to her coloring, I felt that familiar surge of resolve. I couldn't let Linda keep playing her games. I needed to protect Mia and Sophie from the mess Linda had created, and that meant taking action, Dot. The next morning, I called a lawyer, Dot. Her name was Diane, and from our first conversation, I could tell she wasn't one to sugarcoat things. After I'd laid out the details, the affair, the deceit, the way Linda had involved our daughters, Diane paused, her tone steady but serious. Tom, 
You have a strong case for custody, but you'll need to prepare. Linda's going to fight back. She might even try to turn Mia and Sophie against you. If we're going to protect your daughters, we'll need evidence. The word hung heavy in the air. Evidence. It felt dirty, like I was about to tear apart every last shred of privacy and trust left between Linda and me. But then, I thought about Mia and Sophie, about the way Linda had used them as pawns. Any guilt I felt dissolved. This wasn't about Linda or me anymore. This was about our daughters. Do what you need to, Diane, I said, my voice firm. I'll get the evidence. I don't care what it takes. Linda was out that night, so I was alone with Mia and Sophie. They didn't ask where she was, and I didn't volunteer any guesses. We ordered pizza, watched a movie, and for the first time in weeks, I felt like I was getting a glimpse of our old life back. Mia leaned her head on my shoulder and Sophie curled up on my other side, their small, warm bodies a grounding force against the storm swirling around us. Dad, Mia said quietly during a lull in the movie, can we go to the park tomorrow? Just us? Her voice caught me off guard. She sounded older than her twelve years, almost like she was seeing through the surface of things, sensing the turmoil beneath. I looked down at her, meeting her eyes. There was a strength there that reminded me of myself, a quiet resilience that made my heart ache. Of course, I said, trying to keep my tone light. Just us. Sophie grinned, her face lighting up. Yeah, just us, like before. That night, after tucking them into bed, I stood in the hallway, staring at the closed door to our bedroom. Linda still wasn't home, probably off with Daniel, and the thought was like acid in my veins. I couldn't sleep. Every time I closed my eyes, I saw her sitting across from that man, laughing like nothing in the world was wrong, like our family wasn't falling apart because of her choices. I waited until I heard her come in, the soft click of the front door as she slipped inside. Her footsteps paused when she saw me sitting at the kitchen table, but she didn't say anything. She walked into the kitchen, poured herself a glass of water, and turned to face me, her posture defensive. Long night? I asked, keeping my voice neutral, Dot. She shrugged, brushing off the question. Just catching up with friends. I nodded, letting the lie hang between us, the air thick with unspoken accusations. Finally, I spoke, my voice low but steady. Linda, this is going to end one way or another. I've talked to a lawyer. We're going to figure this out, and it's not going to be the way you think. Her expression faltered for a split second before hardening again her eyes flashing with defiance. So that's it? You're really going to drag our girls through this? They've already been dragged through it, I replied, my tone calm but edged with steel. You did that the moment you brought Daniel into their lives, the moment you started lying to them, making them part of your affair. This isn't about us anymore, Linda. This is about protecting Mia and Sophie from the mess you've created. She scoffed, crossing her arms. You don't know what you're talking about. They've been happier since Daniel's been around. He's been there for them in ways you haven't. Her words hit me like a punch to the gut, but I didn't let it show. I knew this was just another way she'd try to twist things to make herself feel justified, but I wasn't going to let her rewrite the story. I stood up, locking eyes with her. If you really believe that, then you're in more denial than I thought. You think you're making them happy by lying to them? by making them part of your fantasy? They're kids, Linda. They don't need Daniel. They need stability. They need the truth. For a moment, I thought I saw a crack in her armor, a flicker of something that resembled regret. But it vanished as quickly as it had come. She straightened, her face hardening. You have no idea what you're doing, Tom, she said, her voice venomous. You're going to regret this. I'll make sure of it. I stepped back, my heart pounding, but I refused to let her shake me. Maybe I will, but at least I'll know I did everything I could to protect my daughters from this mess. I'm not backing down, Linda. Not this time. The next day, after Linda had left to meet a friend, I took out her laptop and her phone. I hated myself for it. The way it felt like I was stooping to her level. But I reminded myself that she'd already broken every rule of trust and respect. I wasn't the one who had lied. I was just trying to piece together the truth she had shattered, Dot. It didn't take long to find what I was looking for. Her messages with Daniel were all there, clear as day. They hadn't even bothered to hide anything, their words so familiar, so full of the casual intimacy that she'd once shared with me. 
Each message felt like a fresh wound, a reminder of how deeply she'd betrayed me. Dot. But then I saw the real damage, the messages between Linda and the girls. She had been calling Daniel Uncle Daniel around them, letting them think he was just another family friend. My stomach churned as I read Sophie's innocent messages, telling him how much fun they'd had, how they'd gone to the zoo or the park like it was the most normal thing in the world. Linda had woven him into our lives, making him a presence that felt natural and comforting to them. She'd built a lie around him so carefully that even Mia and Sophie believed it. I felt sick. This wasn't just an affair. It was something far more sinister, a calculated deception designed to replace me. I printed everything out, making copies of every text, every email, every picture. It wasn't just evidence for the lawyer, it was proof, a testament to the reality Linda had tried to create behind my back. And as I gathered the pages into a file, I felt a strange sense of calm. This was my armor, the truth that would protect Mia and Sophie from the web of lies Linda had spun around them dot that night. I sat with Mia and Sophie, our routine of reading bedtime stories suddenly feeling sacred, something worth fighting for. When I closed the book, Mia looked up at me, her eyes searching. Dad, is everything going to be okay? She asked, her voice barely a whisper. I hesitated, not wanting to burden her with the truth, but I couldn't lie either. I took her hand, squeezing it gently. Yes, honey, it's going to be okay. I'm here for you, always. No matter what happens, you and Sophie are my world. That's never going to change. She looked at me, her eyes a mixture of relief and worry, and I hugged her tight, feeling the weight of the promise settle into my bones. I knew the road ahead would be messy, full of anger and accusations, but I also knew that I would fight for my daughters, for their peace and happiness. Linda had tried to build a new reality, but I wasn't going to let her drag Mia and Sophie any deeper into her lies, Dot. As I closed their bedroom door and walked back to my own empty bed, I knew the hardest part was still to come. But for the first time, I felt ready. Whatever battles lay ahead, I would face them head on. This was about protecting my family, and I was ready to do whatever it took, Dot. The morning felt charged, as if the air in the house was simmering just under a boiling point. Linda had taken the girls to school, and the silence that hung in the house afterward was heavy. This was it, the point of no return. I wasn't just getting ready to confront her, I was preparing for a full-on battle to keep Mia and Sophie out of her tangled web of deceit. Once she returned, I was ready. She walked into the kitchen, her bag over one shoulder, sipping coffee as though it were any other day. When she saw me, though, her expression faltered. She knew by now that I wasn't the same Tom she'd controlled with her lies. She sensed it in the way I sat there, calm, not one ounce of the usual tension showing. She could play innocent all she wanted, but I was prepared for whatever act she tried next. Linda, I started keeping my voice steady, we need to talk. She set her coffee cup down with exaggerated patience. I'm busy, Tom. If this is about last night, no, Linda, I interrupted, holding up a hand to stop her. This is about Mia and Sophie, about where we're headed, and you're going to listen. This time you don't get a choice. Her face tightened, her mouth a thin, pressed line but she didn't speak. For a moment, I could almost see a flicker of fear in her eyes, and it gave me the strength to keep going. I know everything, Linda, I said, my voice sharp and controlled. I know about you and Daniel. I know about the trips with the girls. I know about every single lie you've told. Her face drained of color, but she managed a tight, defiant smile. So what? You've known for a while now. You think you're the only one who gets to decide what's best for them? Decide? I nearly laughed, a bitter edge creeping into my voice. You didn't give me a choice, Linda. You dragged them into this, forced them to lie, to pretend, as if they're a part of some twisted fantasy life you've created. Her eyes narrowed, her voice hardening. You were never around, Tom. You're too busy with work. You've been distant for years, wrapped up in everything but us. Don't you dare act like you were ever here for them. Her words struck me like a physical blow, but I didn't let it show. And you think that justifies lying to them? Dragging them into your mess? I asked coldly. They don't need Uncle Daniel or any other stranger in their lives. They need parents who actually care about them. She opened her mouth, probably with some excuse or accusation, but I cut her off. I've talked to a lawyer, Linda. I'm filing for custody. 
temporary to start. The court's going to hear exactly what you've done, how you've dragged the girls into your affair, using them as cover for your lies, and don't think I don't have proof. Her defiance faltered. She looked at me with wide eyes, almost vulnerable for the first time. But I didn't give her a chance to twist things around, not this time, Dot. She laughed bitterly. You're unbelievable, Tom. You think the courts will side with you? I've been the one here, raising them, doing the hard work while you've been too busy to even notice. They'll side with the one who's telling the truth, I cut in, my voice cool and controlled. And I'll make sure that every piece of evidence I have shows exactly what you've done. You're not going to be able to twist this around and play the victim anymore. A flicker of panic crossed her face and she tried to cover it with anger. You really think this is going to work? You're going to tear our family apart over a few mistakes? Mistakes, I said, feeling the anger rise in my voice. Mistakes are slipping up, telling a lie once. But you? You've built an entire world of lies. You've rewritten reality for Mia and Sophie, made them think this is normal, that it's okay for them to live in some fantasy that you've created with a stranger. I'm done letting you manipulate them. She was shaking now, but it was hard to tell if it was fear or fury. You think you can just... take them from me? Her voice was thick with barely contained rage. They're my daughters too, Tom. You don't get to decide that. Maybe not, I replied, calm and unshaken. But I'm not the one who dragged them into an affair. You did that all on your own. There was a long, tense silence between us, the weight of it pressing down like a physical force. She didn't have an answer, not one that would hold up to the truth. And in that moment, I knew I had her cornered. She could try to fight it, but she was going to lose Dot. Without another word, I turned and left, grabbing my jacket as I walked out the door. I needed space, a moment to breathe away from the thick, suffocating lies that had filled our house. I drove with no destination in mind, just letting the open road clear my head as I prepared for what was coming next. A few days later, the reality of our impending custody battle settled over the house like a dark cloud. Linda and I spoke as little as possible, each exchange stiff and strained, as if any more words would set off another fight. Meanwhile, I focused on the girls, trying to be the father they deserved. We played board games, watched movies, went to the park like we used to. Every moment I spent with them felt like a lifeline, Reminding me of what I was fighting for, Dot Mia sensed something was up. One evening, she came into my office while I was sorting through the paperwork Diane had sent me. She looked small in the doorway, her twelve-year-old frame carrying more worry than she should ever have had to bear. Dad? Her voice was soft, hesitant. I put down the papers and turned to her, smiling as best as I could. What's up, sweetheart? She hesitated, then walked over and sat beside me. Her gaze was steady, searching, and I could see the confusion and hurt in her eyes. Are you and Mom? Are you going to be okay? I took a deep breath, weighing my words carefully. Things might be different for a little while, Mia, I said gently. But what matters most is that you and Sophie are going to be okay. I'll make sure of that. She looked down, her hands twisting in her lap, then whispered, Is it because of Uncle Daniel? The name hit me like a punch but I kept my face calm, giving her a reassuring nod. Yes, sweetheart, but it's a grown-up problem. You don't need to worry about that. All you need to know is that I love you and Sophie more than anything in the world, and no matter what happens, that's never going to change. She nodded slowly, absorbing the words, her face showing a maturity beyond her years. Then, after a moment, she gave me a small, hesitant smile and leaned against me. I put my arm around her, feeling a surge of fierce, protective love. I knew she was struggling to understand, but she trusted me, and that was all I needed Dot that night. I met Diane in her office, ready to file the paperwork for temporary custody. She reviewed the evidence I'd collected, her face serious as she took it all in. She didn't mince words. Tom, this is going to be hard. Linda's going to fight back, and if she's able to make the girls believe her version of things, it could be an uphill battle. You'll need to be prepared. I nodded, feeling the weight of her words, but determined to stay strong. I'll do whatever it takes, Diane. I'm not letting her drag them any deeper into this mess. Diane looked at me, her eyes understanding but firm. Then we'll fight, and we'll make sure the truth is clear for everyone to see. The papers were filed the next day, 
and I knew Linda would receive the notice soon enough. She hadn't shown any sign of backing down, so I braced myself for the inevitable storm. This was going to be ugly, and there was no turning back. I could only hope that the truth would be enough to shield Mia and Sophie from the chaos their mother had dragged them into, Dot. When Linda saw the papers on the kitchen counter a few days later, her face went pale. She picked them up, her fingers trembling as she flipped through the pages, her eyes darting over the words. Then slowly, she looked up at me, her face twisted with rage. You think you're so clever, she spat, her voice low and venomous. You really think you can take them from me? I met her gaze, my voice calm, unyielding. This isn't about taking them from you, Linda. This is about protecting them, from you, from the lies, the games, the way you've made them part of something they don't understand. They deserve better. Her face flushed red with anger, but there was a flicker of fear beneath it. You're going to regret this, she hissed, her voice trembling with fury. I'll make sure of it, Tom. You'll regret this. But I didn't flinch. I stood my ground, knowing that I was doing the right thing. We'll see about that. Without another word, she threw the papers down and stormed out, slamming the door behind her. I stayed where I was, feeling the weight of everything settle on my shoulders. But there was a strange sense of peace, too, a feeling of resolve that was stronger than any of her threats. I was in this for Mia and Sophie, and I wouldn't stop until they were safe. Free from Linda's lies and deception dot the following week, I prepared for the custody hearing with Diane. She had warned me repeatedly, Linda would use every trick in the book to hold on to Mia and Sophie, and I had to be ready for anything. Every time I looked over the evidence, each email, every photo, all the messages between Linda and Uncle Daniel, it reinforced my resolve. This was no longer about hurt pride or betrayal. This was about giving Mia and Sophie the stable, honest life they deserved, Dot. The morning of the hearing, I dressed carefully, choosing the same suit I'd worn for my wedding. It felt strange, almost surreal, slipping into the clothes that had once symbolized love, trust, and family, now serving as armor for a battle I never wanted to fight, Dot. When I arrived at the courthouse, I saw Linda waiting on the opposite side of the hallway, looking perfect as always. She was dressed in a soft, elegant blouse, her hair styled just right. But there was no warmth in her expression, only cold determination. She glanced at me, her gaze icy, and I knew she was ready to fight. Dot Diane met me near the courtroom doors. She gave me a nod of reassurance. Remember, Tom, stay calm. No matter what accusations come up, keep your focus on Mia and Sophie. This is about them. I took a deep breath, steadying myself. I know. I'm ready. As we filed into the courtroom, the reality of it hit me. I was about to fight for custody of my daughters. The girls I'd watched grow from tiny infants into the bright, curious kids they were today. This hearing wasn't just about paperwork or accusations. It was about their futures, their happiness, and I would do whatever it took to protect that. Linda's lawyer spoke first, painting her as a dedicated mother who'd always been there for the girls. He tried to make it seem like my work schedule had kept me distant, implying that Linda had been the constant, loving presence Mia and Sophie needed. It was the narrative I expected, but hearing it in court, laid out so neatly and strategically, felt like a twist of the knife dot Linda played her role well, looking composed but vulnerable, as if this was all happening to her, as if she was the innocent party in some terrible misunderstanding. I could see the judge watching her closely, and for a moment I felt a chill of doubt dot. Then Diane spoke, laying out every piece of evidence we'd gathered, the secret meetings, the deception, the way Linda had actively involved the girls in her affair. She didn't mince words. Linda had shown a pattern of poor judgment, of placing her own desires above her children's needs. I glanced over at Linda as Diane laid it all out. Her face was pale, her hands clenched tightly together, but she didn't break Dot. When it was my turn to testify, I told the truth, my voice calm but filled with the weight of what had happened. I talked about my love for Mia and Sophie, about how Linda's choices had shattered our family. But I focused on the impact her deception had had on our daughters, how she'd forced them to live a lie they couldn't possibly understand. I'm not asking to take them away from their mother. I said, my voice steady. 
but I want them to have a life built on trust, not deception. They deserve stability, not a twisted version of what a family should be. The judge listened carefully, his expression unreadable. Finally, he leaned back in his chair, his gaze moving between me and Linda. This is a difficult case, he said, his tone heavy. But my primary concern is the well-being of the children. It's clear that both parents love their daughters, but there have been some poor choices made, choices that may not have prioritized the children's best interests. Linda shifted, her lawyer leaning in to whisper something in her ear. I watched as her face grew tight, her fingers clenching even harder. The judge glanced over at her and then back at me. Given the circumstances, I am granting temporary custody to the father with supervised visitation for the mother he said, his voice final. Linda's hand flew to her mouth, a gasp escaping her lips. She turned to look at me, fury and disbelief flashing in her eyes, but I kept my expression neutral, refusing to let her see the relief flooding through me. This was only temporary, but it was a step in the right direction, Dot. As the judge finalized the details, I saw Linda's mask slip. Her expression hardened, and I knew that the battle was far from over. She wouldn't let this go, and I could almost hear her vowing to make my life as difficult as possible. But I was ready for it. I'd fought to protect Mia and Sophie, and I wasn't going to let her scare me off, Dot. The girls didn't know what had happened in court. I'd kept everything from them, not wanting to burden them with the weight of our battle. But that afternoon, when I picked them up from school, I felt an overwhelming sense of responsibility. They were my world, and I would protect them with everything I had, Dot. Mia climbed into the car, her face brightening when she saw me. Hey, Dad, can we go get ice cream? I smiled, feeling the tension ease as I looked at her and Sophie. Absolutely. As we sat together at the ice cream shop, the girls chattering happily about their day, I felt a sense of peace I hadn't experienced in months. They didn't know about the hearing, about the anger and bitterness that had filled the courtroom that morning. All they knew was that they were with me, safe and happy, Dot. Later that evening, as I tucked them into bed, Mia looked up at me, her eyes serious. Dad, is everything going to be okay? The question hit me harder than anything Linda had thrown at me in court. Mia was perceptive. She understood more than I'd given her credit for. I took her hand, squeezing it gently. Yes, honey, everything is going to be okay, I promise. She nodded, her small fingers wrapping around mine as if holding on to something solid. I knew then that I would keep that promise, no matter what it took. I was fighting for her and Sophie, for their peace of mind, their right to a stable life, and I wasn't going to let Linda's betrayal steal that from them, Dot. The next morning, Linda showed up at the house. She hadn't called, hadn't given any warning, just showed up, her face set in a hard mask of determination. I knew what this was. She was furious about the hearing, about losing control. She wanted to prove that she still had some power. Tom, she said, her voice sharp. We need to talk. I stepped out onto the porch, closing the door behind me so the girls wouldn't hear. What is it, Linda? She folded her arms, her jaw set, eyes flashing with anger. You think you've won? That you're going to just walk away with the girls? You have no idea what you're doing. I'm doing what's best for them. I replied, my voice calm but firm. You brought this on yourself, Linda. You made the choice to lie, to involve them in your affair. This isn't about winning. It's about protecting them. She laughed, a cold, bitter sound. Protecting them? From me? You're the one who was never around. You're the one who ignored them for years while I did all the hard work. Her words stung, but I held my ground. That's not how this works, Linda. You don't get to rewrite history to make yourself feel better. Her face twisted in anger, but I could see the fear beneath it. She was losing control, and she knew it. Fine, Tom, but this isn't over. I'm going to fight this, and I'll make sure you regret it. I met her gaze, refusing to back down. Do what you have to, Linda. I'll be ready. She glared at me for a long moment, then turned and stormed off the porch, her heels clicking against the sidewalk as she walked away. I watched her go, a strange mixture of sadness and relief filling me. This was the woman I'd once loved, the mother of my children. But now, she was a stranger, 
someone who had made choices I couldn't forgive. I took a deep breath, feeling the weight of everything settle on my shoulders. This battle wasn't over, but I had Mia and Sophie, and for now, that was enough. I'd keep fighting, keep doing whatever it took to give them the life they deserved. I didn't know what the future held, but I knew one thing for sure. I was ready for it, Dutch. As the days passed, I could sense Linda's resentment boiling beneath the surface, a force as strong as any storm. I tried to focus on Mia and Sophie, taking every opportunity to spend time with them, to show them that no matter what was happening between their mother and me, they were my priority. But I knew Linda wasn't going to let this go quietly. She'd made that clear the day she stormed off the porch, and she was true to her word. One evening, as I was putting the girls to bed, Sophie asked, Daddy, when is Mommy going to be here for bedtime again? Her question hit me like a blow. I knew that Linda's absence in the evenings was difficult for them, especially for Sophie, who had always clung to her mother. She'll be here when she can, sweetheart, I said, keeping my voice steady. But I'm here for you always. She nodded, but I could see the sadness in her eyes. I wanted to explain, to help her understand, but how could I explain any of this to an eight-year-old? I promised myself I'd find a way to be enough for both of them, Dot. The next day, my phone rang with a call from Diane. Her voice was measured, but I could hear the urgency. Tom, you need to know Linda's pushing hard. She's claiming that you're alienating the girls from her, that you're manipulating them against her. I felt a surge of frustration. That's not true, Diane. I've done everything I can to keep this from affecting them. They're my daughters. I just want them to have a stable, happy life. Diane sighed. I believe you, Tom, but this is part of her strategy. She's trying to frame herself as the victim, someone who's being kept from her children. If she can make a strong enough case, she could gain some traction, maybe even have the temporary custody reversed. My hands clenched. I could almost hear Linda's voice in my mind, accusing me, twisting things to suit her narrative. What can I do? We need to counter her claims, Diane said. Keep things as normal as possible. Show that you're not pushing her out, but rather prioritizing the girl's well-being. Document everything, every interaction, every moment you spend with the girls. It's crucial that we paint the full picture. I hung up the phone, my mind reeling. Linda wasn't going to stop. I could see the shape of her plan now, how she was attempting to regain control by any means necessary. But this was more than just a battle for custody. It was a battle for truth, for Mia and Sophie's right to a life unclouded by deception. Tio. That evening, I started a journal, writing down everything I did with the girls, every interaction Linda had with them. It felt strange at first, documenting my life in such detail, but I understood why it was necessary. If Linda wanted to paint herself as the victim, I was going to show the court every action, every effort I'd made to keep our daughters grounded and secure dot two weeks past, and things settled into a new, if tense, routine. Linda's supervised visits took place at her parents' house, and the girls saw her once a week, sometimes twice, if Linda felt inclined. I noticed that each time they returned, they were quieter, their laughter less frequent. Mia, in particular, seemed withdrawn, and I worried that the stress of our fractured family was taking a toll on her dot one night. As I tucked her in, I asked softly, How are you doing, honey? I know things are different lately. She looked at me her eyes too wise for her twelve years. Mommy said that you're keeping us from her. She said you don't want us to see her anymore. The words were like a dagger to my chest. Mia, that's not true. I would never want to keep you from your mother. I just want what's best for you and Sophie. You deserve to be happy, to have a stable life. That's all I want. Mia was silent for a moment, then nodded, though I could see the doubt lingering in her gaze. Linda's words had gotten to her planting seeds of confusion and mistrust. I felt helpless, knowing that Linda was using the girls as tools in her campaign against me, forcing them to carry the weight of her bitterness, Dot. But Mia was strong. I knew that. I could see it in the way she looked at me, her brow furrowing as she tried to make sense of things. She wanted to trust me, wanted to believe what I was saying, and that was enough to keep me fighting, Dot. The next week, I received a call from Diane that changed everything. 
Tom, I don't know how to tell you this, but Linda's filed a motion to overturn temporary custody. She's claiming that the girls are suffering emotionally under your care, that you're isolating them from her and fostering resentment. She's pushing hard for the courts to grant her immediate shared custody. The floor felt like it dropped out from under me. I couldn't believe it. After everything she'd done, Linda was now trying to rewrite history, casting herself as the injured party, the mother who was being kept from her daughters. I took a deep breath, steadying myself. What do we do now, Diane? We fight back, she said firmly. We have the documentation, and we have the original evidence of Linda's poor judgment and the way she involved the girls in her relationship with Daniel. But we need to be prepared for her to make this ugly, Tom. She'll do whatever it takes to regain control. The word control hung in the air like a dark cloud. Linda didn't want what was best for the girls. She wanted to win, to pull them back into her orbit, into the twisted reality she'd created. But I wasn't going to let her. I was ready to fight for them, to protect them from the corrosive influence of her lies, Dot. The hearing was scheduled for the following week, and every day leading up to it felt like an eternity. I knew Linda was getting desperate, and it showed. Her visits with the girls grew more tense, more emotionally charged. She'd tell them about the upcoming hearing, how soon they'd be able to live together again, sowing confusion and tension in their young minds, Dot, one afternoon. After Mia returned from a visit with Linda, she pulled me aside, her eyes serious. Dad, she began slowly, Mom says that you're keeping us from her because... because you're angry with her. She said you don't want us to be a family again. I knelt down to her level, looking into her earnest, worried face. Mia, listen to me carefully. This isn't about anger. It's not about keeping you from your mom. I love you and Sophie more than anything, and I want you to have a safe, happy life. Sometimes grown-ups have disagreements, and it's hard to understand. But I would never do anything to keep you from being happy. She nodded, though I could see the confusion still clouding her eyes. Linda's words had cut deep, and I hated the way she was trying to manipulate our daughters, turning them into pawns in her battle to regain control. But I couldn't let anger get the best of me. If I was going to win this, I had to stay calm, to keep my focus on what mattered most. Mia and Sophie Dot, the day of the hearing arrived, and the tension was palpable. Linda sat across from me in the courtroom, her expression stony, her gaze as cold and unreadable as ice. I could tell from her lawyer's demeanor that they were prepared for an all-out fight. Linda's strategy was simple. Cast herself as the loving mother who'd been wronged, the victim of an overbearing, unyielding ex-husband. Her lawyer began with statements accusing me of alienation, painting a picture of a father who was controlling, manipulative, keeping his daughters isolated and afraid. Linda played her part well, her face an image of soft sadness, of restrained grief, as if she were the true victim in all this. I could see the judge watching her, his gaze thoughtful, and a small sliver of fear pierced my calm dot, but Diane was prepared. When it was her turn, she presented the evidence we'd gathered the emails, the messages with Daniel, the proof of Linda's decision to involve the girls in her relationship. She painted a stark contrast, not of a victimized mother, but of a woman who had put her desires above the needs of her children, who had woven a web of lies around them, forcing them to live a life that was anything but stable dot. When I took the stand, I spoke carefully, my voice steady. I told the court how much I loved Mia and Sophie how I'd tried to shield them from the chaos Linda had brought into our lives. I talked about my dedication to their happiness, how I wanted them to have a life free from deception, to grow up with a foundation of honesty and trust. Dot Linda watched me with narrowed eyes, her gaze sharp and unyielding, but I held her gaze, refusing to let her intimidate me. This wasn't about winning or losing. It was about doing what was right for Mia and Sophie, about protecting them from the person their mother had become, Dot. When the hearing ended, we all waited, the tension so thick it felt like we could touch it. The judge looked at us, his expression grave, and I knew that he understood the weight of his decision, Dot. After what felt like an eternity, he spoke. Both parents clearly love their daughters, he began, his tone measured. However, the evidence suggests a pattern of behavior that raises concerns about the mother's judgment in involving her daughters in adult matters. 
He paused, glancing over at Linda, then at me. For the sake of the children's well-being, I am ordering that primary custody remain with the father. The mother will have supervised visitation to ensure that both parents can maintain a relationship with the children without compromising their emotional stability. Linda's face went pale, her hands clutching the edges of the table. I felt a wave of relief, but there was no victory in it, only a sense of deep responsibility. Mia and Sophie were counting on me. I was going to have to work harder than ever to be the parent they needed, dot. As the courtroom emptied, Linda stood in place, frozen, her expression a mixture of disbelief and fury. She threw me one last look, full of venom, before storming out, her lawyer trailing behind her. But I didn't flinch. The war she'd tried to wage was over. Now, it was time to focus on rebuilding, on giving Mia and Sophie the life they deserved, free from the shadow of deceit and resentment. That night, as I tucked the girls into bed, I felt a calm settle over me. Mia looked up at me, her expression serious but full of trust, and I felt the weight of everything I'd fought for crystallize in that moment. They were safe, they were with me, and we were finally free, Dot. Sophie hugged me tight, her small arms wrapping around my neck. Good night, Daddy, she whispered, her voice sleepy but content. I kissed her forehead, whispering back, Good night, sweetheart. I'll always be here for you. Always. As I closed their door and walked down the hallway, I knew the road ahead would be full of challenges, but I was ready for them. Whatever came next, we would face it together, dot in the days following the hearing, a quiet peace settled over the house. It wasn't the kind of peace that comes from everything being perfectly resolved, but rather a hard-won sense of stability, like standing on solid ground after months of uncertainty. Linda's reaction to the court's decision still lingered in the back of my mind, but for Mia and Sophie, things were beginning to feel normal again. I'd fought for them, and now it was time to give them the kind of life they deserved, Dot. Our days were simple, filled with routines that seemed small but gave us a sense of togetherness. I was mindful of every moment, breakfast at the kitchen table, walks to the park, movie nights cuddled up on the couch. It was incredible how much these little rituals meant. They grounded us helped us heal, and reminded me of what it meant to truly be a father, dot Mia Kama in particular, seemed to blossom. She'd been withdrawn for so long, affected by Linda's manipulation and the confusion of everything she'd heard, but now she laughed more easily, opened up more. One night as we played a board game after dinner, she gave me a hesitant smile. Dad, do you think everything's going to be okay now? She asked, her voice quiet but full of hope. I met her gaze, feeling the weight of her question. Yes, sweetheart, I said, keeping my voice steady. It's going to be okay. We'll figure it out together, you and me, and Sophie, too. This is our family. She nodded, her eyes bright with relief. I knew she was too young to fully understand everything that had happened. But she sensed the change. She could feel that she was safe, that she was home. Linda's visits with the girls remained supervised, and while I was grateful to have a protective boundary, I also felt a lingering sadness. She'd once been the woman I loved, the mother of my children, a partner I'd shared my life with. I'd fought hard to protect our daughters from her decisions, but I knew they'd have questions as they got older. For now, I focused on giving them the stability and love they needed. They were my priority, and that would never change. I'd been careful not to speak negatively about Linda in front of Mia and Sophie. Whatever she'd done, she was still their mother, and I didn't want to color their memories with bitterness. Diane had advised me to keep the focus on building positive memories, to give them a sense of consistency and warmth that Linda's visits couldn't disrupt. Dot one evening, as we sat around the dinner table, Sophie asked, Daddy, will we ever all be together again? Her question stung, but I'd prepared myself for it. I reached across the table, taking her small hand in mine. Sweetheart, no matter where we are, we're always together in our hearts and that's what makes us a family. She nodded, seeming to understand, though her eight-year-old heart still yearned for the family we once were. But I could see the trust in her eyes. The security that came from knowing I'd always be there for her dot weeks turned into months, and slowly, life began to take on a new shape. The scars from what had happened were still there, but they were beginning to fade, woven into the fabric of our days. Mia was thriving at school, making friends and joining after-school clubs. 
Sophie's laughter became a regular sound in the house again, filling the rooms with joy and light. Dot one Saturday, I decided to take the girls on a road trip to a lake we used to visit as a family. The drive was filled with laughter, music, and the easy chatter that had once been missing between us. When we arrived, the girls immediately ran down to the shore, skipping rocks and collecting shells, their laughter echoing across the water dot. As I watched them, a sense of peace settled over me. This was what I'd fought for. Not revenge, not proving a point, but this. Moments of pure, unfiltered happiness for my daughters. Moments that were free from the shadows of the past dot. After a while, Mia sat beside me on a rock, watching the water lap against the shore. She was growing up so fast, her twelve-year-old face filled with a maturity beyond her years. She looked at me, a question in her eyes. Do you think we'll always be okay, Dad? She asked, her voice soft but steady. I put an arm around her shoulders, pulling her close. Yes, Mia. We'll always be okay. We're strong. We've been through a lot. But we've come out on the other side stronger than ever. We have each other and that's all we need. She nodded, leaning her head against my shoulder, her small hand reaching for mine. In that moment, I realized that we had indeed found our way back to each other. The love between us was stronger than any challenge Linda had thrown our way. And that was something no one could ever take from us, Dot. In time, Linda's role in our lives diminished. She still had her supervised visits, but they were less frequent, and the girls no longer seemed to count on them. They knew, as I did, that this was their home, that I was there to support them, to listen to them, to be the rock they could lean on, Dot. Life moved forward full of the usual ups and downs, but with a sense of resilience that had grown from everything we'd been through. I watched Mia and Sophie grow, their laughter filling the house, their happiness my greatest reward dot. And as I stood by the lake that day, watching them splash and play in the water, I felt a quiet sense of gratitude. I knew we'd never be the family I'd once dreamed of, but we were something just as precious a family that had been tested, that had fought through the darkness, and had emerged stronger than ever. I reached into my pocket and pulled out a small stone I'd found, worn smooth by the lake's waves. I'd keep it, a reminder of this day, of this chapter in our lives that had ended on a note of hope and resilience, Dot. We would be okay. I was sure of it, Dot. Thank you for listening to today's stories. If you enjoyed listening, Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Also, leave a comment below to share your thoughts on what happened. Take care.